All right, hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf here, and today we're going to be playing some Dragon Blaze. Well, actually, we're going to be taking a look at the four new overlords that are coming, and we're finally getting into the elves. I mean, literally everybody saw this coming. They're trying to catch us up with the Korean version right now, so they're kind of speeding through everything, but hopefully they do keep giving us the characters for free, at least base. And let's see where it goes. If anything, they'll probably make us... Uh, make these so it seems like I could click on these and actually get to see their skills ah okay it's actually pretty neat we can actually look at their skills right now all right first skill of a zillion so I think that's her name right yeah a zillion she is an archer by the way and I'm pretty sure she does have high DPS for physical damage. So this is probably an archer that I probably will be building. Probably. Let's see. Inflicts damage on all enemies. Increases physical damage they receive for 20 seconds. Azillion's transformation into Starlight Marksman. Increases twice as much physical damage as well as damage dealt to enemies and it deals four times damage to bosses all right second skill under the holy starlight protection Azillion transforms into starlight marksman Azillion turns into a starlight marksman for 11 seconds while changing into starlight marksman the enemies receive even more damage and increases the whole team's physical damage. Inflicts damage on all enemies upon normal attacks and inflicts times three damage on bosses. This effect cannot be removed by enemy buff removals or by attack. Okay, so it doesn't, servers can't remove this buff. Okay. That's pretty nice. So we have a character that we can use inside of uh, Cerberus. All right, skill number three. Increased physical damage, random additional damage for 13 seconds. For all party members, Azillion's transformation into Starlight Marksman increases twice as much physical damage and as random damage effect to all party members. All right, all right. All right, passives, first passive. Increases additional boss damage for every seventh attack on an enemy. Stacks up to seven times, cannot be removed. That's actually really, really nice. So she seems really focused on world boss. I like that. Now that there's no reason for me to really compete with my guildmates, you know. Or helping them out kill <laughs> killing the guild boss like quickly. It's mostly just trying to beat my guildmates and Though well, actually we are competing with our guildmates. Whoops. I was not trying to say that. Let's just say it's more of like fighting my guildmates now. Instead of us helping each other. <laughs> All right, this little boss damage increases for all party members for the second passive. Third passive, increased dex and range damage. All right, not half bad. What is the max? Attack increases and additional boss damage increases. Not half bad if max. All right, which one is this? Increases duration of... Hold up. Which one is this? Okay, it's the third skill. Just wanted to make sure. And doubles the following effect. Increases the damage that the enemies will be taking and the physical damage that you give to your teammates. Alright, not bad. I do kind of like her. I, I might actually get her. They do have a skill video here. Okay. 
do kind of want to see your effects a little bit. Okay, so they're pushing all the buttons twice. I actually kind of like that one. Her little orbs beside her turns into pretty much a bow. And that's the one that increases your physical damage and random damage. Ah, that's her transformation. Okay. Okay. Um, I was wondering what she looked like if she did that. Alright, let's go to the next one. And this is Draken Dracus. Word name, but alright. <laughs> he is probably a mage, if anything. Yeah, probably like a full on mage. Alright, what do we have here? First skill. Alright, where does this start here? Okay, it's right here. Five Dark Matter target. Okay, that just sounds weird the way I read that. Five Dark Matters target. I don't know why that just sounds so weird. But anywho, alright, he uses five Dark Matters on a random target and inflicts damage for each buff is, that's being removed. I think that sounds way better. The attacked enemy will receive damage over time for 18 seconds. Okay, that's not that bad. Oh, obviously bleed damage is not like a huge amount, but it's actually a pretty decent amount to keep DPS up. But the fact that this stacks five times is actually pretty nice. It just means a lot more damage. So, can't underestimate the bleed damage. This attack does not miss if the enemy attack casts... Oh, if the ca enemy was casting, the casting gets cancelled. So, that could be actually used against um, Kai. Kai can actually get his his um, drain cancelled. So, you can actually keep him from going into his... Um, I mean, does he not look like the dude from Star Wars? I'm just saying. I mean, everybody has already said it as soon as he was released. I definitely said it as soon as he was, he was released. But, second skill. Creates a shield equal to his attack that lasts seven seconds. Absorbs all enemies' debuffs. Wait, what? And inflicts damage to all enemies when the shield ends and debuffs absorbed during that are returned to the attackers. This effect cannot be removed. Okay. So I'm guessing since one character has like could have like a taunt, you take that, then whoever had attacked him receives a taunt. Like, that could actually be a thing, I guess. Guess that's how he spreads it around. Alright, third skill. Afflicts damage to all enemies, deals an additional enemy for every Dark Matter effect applied to an enemy. Additional effects are activated depending on the number of Dark Matter effects on the enemy. But, these effects do not activate on boss types. All right, suspend normal attacks. Wait, what? Oh, oh, okay, I see. Pretty much suspending normal attacks, as in you can't attack with normal attacks. Suspending active skills, meaning they can't attack with active skills. Return cooldown to use state, so that means they can't do that anymore. And an insta. Oh, we're going back to the insta kill route. Oh, okay, cool. Um, this character is going to be dangerous as hell in the PvP. <laughs> so he's basically, um, he's basically Graysoul. Because Graysoul was famous for insta-killing characters. Was, until we got to the Transcendence and now he's just like, meh. <laughs> I, I guess it was overdue for Overlord that actually killed 
Well, not until we got to the transit. Until we got to the overlords is what I meant. Now, Grayso can't insta-kill. Well, he can still insta-kill. He can't insta-kill overlords because overlords aren't affected by any any like debuffs that transcendents have. So only overlords can affect overlords with debuffs. Yeah, that's how they change it if you're curious on that. Alright, first passive. When Draken is hit, his magic damage is increased for 4 seconds and cannot be targeted by enemies. Okay. That's just pretty much for 4 seconds though. But it's actually still pretty decent. Second passive. Decreases... Oh, decreases cooldown recovery by 32. And your attack speed by 38. For all enemies. The only reason I read that part is just because that could actually be pretty dangerous. We all have experienced the whole tower decreasing your recovery on your like skills and it does hurt taking down skill recovery hurts like hell unless the character has like really really good uh, normal attack then on the other hand you'll be all right but also taking around down their attack speed yeah your your team can suffer from that a lot and it increases the magic damage enemies receive that's actually pretty decent. So yeah, definitely a good PvP unit. Alright, third skill. Upon normal attack, increase magic damage to all party members and decreases Void's cooldown by 15. Set chance, by the way. So yeah. Alright, max passive. Intelligence is increased. If the damage you receive extends 12% of your HP, you will only receive 12% of damage. Okay. Increases strength waves duration by 9. Oh, okay, never mind. It's actually worth getting him to max then. Because that's actually going to be quite helpful. Alright, ultimate passive. Alright. Ultimate passive increases magic damage received on enemies, increases dark matter created upon using void by 10, and stacks up to 10 times, increases duration of where is this? Of the second skill. So that's for the shield, and increases attack. Well, magic attack. Alright. Let's see his um, actual skills. Oh, he actually floats too. What a weird floating animation. Yeah, so Dark Matter hits at random. It's completely random. Oh, that actually looks pretty sick. Um. So that's where the insta kill comes into. That's out of my game over, even if that character's in air, because that character is removed out of play. So let's say, um, let's use an example. Let's say Kronos is protecting like the whole team. He gets hit out of play. Then you kill everybody else and you're thinking Kronos is going to come back. <laughs> but I already killed the rest of your teammates. And you're still out of play. That's just pretty much game over. And that's your loss. So, from what that is, uh, he removes people out of... He can remove people out of play. Or that's just, like, the timer for that character to respawn. Or either that's the insta-kill shown. The way it goes... Yeah. This guy is dangerous as hell in PvP. And he can cause some havoc. So you should keep out for that one. 
All right, next, Tarinas. Which is pretty much the Paladin, right? I think she is the Paladin. Let's see. First skill. Afflicts damage on one enemy. Forces a mark of seduction. Oh my. <laughs> on it for 21 seconds. Magic damage that... Oh, magic damage that enemies marked with mark of seduction increased damage received. For each time they receive magic damage, it receives additional damage. Oh. Wait, hold up. Magic damage that enemies with the mark of seduction receives increases. Each time they receive magic damage, they receive additional damage. That is... Oh, part of her attack. Okay, yeah, that's that's actually pretty good. I read that right. I was about to say, whoa. That's actually that's actually pretty decent. This effect cannot be dispelled. All right, second skill gains a shield that is percentage of the attack of all party members. Okay, that's nice for nineteen seconds, basically. Protected party members receive reflection damage from enemies hits and inflicts damage over time for 20 seconds. Damage over time cannot be removed, but can be stacked up to four times. Nice. Third attack inflicts damage on all enemies, inflicts additional damage over time for 24 seconds. Also receives recovery of HP for percentage of attack and recovers HP over time. Excludes per second recovery. Other effects can be stacked twice. Okay, that was a little confusing. All right, first passive. Increases magic damage and main stats, which you guys don't know, that's dex, strength, and intelligence. For all party members. Okay. Nice, nice. Second passive. Each time buff is removed by an enemy skill that removes buffs, inflicts damage on all enemies, increases magic damage an enemy receives for 18 seconds, sacks twice. Nice. Third skill. Increases magic damage enemies receive. Oh, third passive. Darn it. <laughs> Max passive. Adds additional range damage when Thorn of Protection is used. So the second skill. Wait, she's not ranged. What? That I thought of. Uh, I guess she's just mostly party support. But this is a magic paladin, by the way. All right. Ultimate passive doubles the effect of Marcus seduction. Huh. Neat. So that means bonus damage received and distal damage increased. Nice. Yeah, as you can see, the paladin mark right there, which is definitely a paladin. So you guys get to play with another magic paladin other than um, Kamel. All Just because we always put intelligence on Kamel. <laughs> All right. Well, I like the way the third skill looks. But the thing is, I'm not going back into magic teams. I'm going to be sticking with physical for a while. So, yeah, she's not really on my book or Draken. All right, next. Elleria. I'm pretty sure she is either a cancer or... Nah, she's not a cancer. I think she's a mage, too. We'll see. Alright, first skill. 
Oh my god, Jesus Christ. Inflicts damage on one enemy. Causes freezing debuff. Every time a party member, including your self attacks, a frozen enemy, the number of freezing debuffs stacked decreased by one. Okay, so it basically just thaws him out. When the number of freezing targets hits zero, and, and it, oh, an explosion occurs and inflicts damage on nearby enemies and stuns them for 13 seconds when used on an enemy that is already frozen the explosion is immediately so freezing effect does not miss excluding bosses bosses take oh bosses um receive increased magic damage so none of this works on bosses but this is what bosses get instead this is last and it's okay pretty neat so basically any target that is frozen you use the first skill and it just explodes immediately it attacks every enemy that is nearby and it damages them and stun them but other than that if they don't have the effect this just starts to freeze them all right second skill increased magic damage for all party members for 14.5 seconds and flicks additional damage when attack is magic effect cannot be removed all right all right third skill cast an ice shield to all party members for 15.6 seconds shielded shielded members only receive one damage from all enemy attack. Oh. Shield disappears when attacked three times. Okay, so that shield's gonna be gone like really quickly, <laughs> considering all the attacks enemies enemies do. When shielded allies attack, they decrease recovery and attack speed of the enemies. Okay, it stacks up to five times. Alright, so that's not gonna last for like too long I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure enemies are gonna rip that off like really quickly but that's still some decent effects to be putting on while you're in that all right first passive evoke fairies to recover HP of all party members okay the percentage of her attack so she's more of like a mage slash heal healer. It's not that bad. Second passive increases magic t attack and intelligence for all party members. So good buffer. Third passive. Upon death, gain a shield to all of your allies that last for 14 seconds. The shield disappears after 12 hits. Stamina of the shield is increased. Alright, that's decent. That's actually pretty decent. Max skill. Increases skill damage of all party members. When using Curse of Code, doubles the effect of magic damage to the boss. Okay, so... This effect at the bottom would be increased, basically. So bosses are going to be taking more damage when using this character. Alright, so the ultimate passive, the mystical waves of power increase range damage units. <laughs> uh, I was thrown off by the mystical waves. Increase magic damage by a pretty decent amount. While using Ice Wall. Alright. Decent for Magic Team. Alright, let's see your skills. Let's see, is she a mage like Draken? Yep, she is definitely a mage. Ah, there it is. 
That's the spread effect. Yeah, she got that pretty perfect. That stun time, though. I'd say this unit is probably really good for either PvP or PvE. So not half bad. So that's pretty much it, guys. <laughs> uh, how do I feel about those characters? Um, I think Ezillion is the one I'm looking forward to the most, if anything. Oh wait, hold up. Let's go to my canter because I just got her uh, skin. Sadly, I didn't get all the um, skins for Metis or Midas. But I did get the Archer and Encanter skin, because I mostly use them now. I'll raise my Rogue as we go. I'll find him as a different skin, if anything. I'm not too bummed about it. Oh, where am I going? But Azillion's definitely one I'm looking forward to the most. As you can see, the increase of um, stats is actually pretty big with these costumes. So if you didn't get them for your characters, you kind of missed out for sure. I recommend if they do come back, do farm the hell out of them. Because they're actually nothing to sleep on. Cause you guys saw how much I increased my um, attack power versus what it is now. It actually gives the, like really decent buffs. Oh god, now I gotta find my last one. Where'd he go? That's not it. Oh, the cape's already on. What? <laughs> Duh. Well, yeah. Increased it by 50k at least. Oh boy, it's been a long week. I haven't been able to farm Midas for a while. The rest of the characters are going to be like really good for magic teams. Like all, <laughs> all three of the elves are definitely magic team material. It really just depends on what you like team them up with. A lot of people dislike a character because they don't know how to like make a good team with them they always try to put them inside of like a random team mixed with like physical units magic units they more shine inside of like a full magic team or a full physical team you gotta you gotta remember that you can't just mix them all together and just expect them to work together at least read their skills and see what they give mostly so yeah but you can still mix them up. It's just like they won't be as effective with their main teams. Oh boy. So yeah, that's pretty much it for me, guys. We just read the passive skills. Oh wait, no, never mind. We do have patch notes, don't we? So yeah, the characters are releasing. You can't click them on here. So when you come into the game, you'll probably that'll probably be the only way you can see them. Transcended Pigs are coming back. Yes. Um, some rewards are being changed for uh, the Secret Shop. And these two events are ending today, unfortunately. So say goodbye to Midas. It was fun while it lasted, to be honest. But Midas needs to go because I need to start farming the actual bosses for Gears. <laughs> I still have not upgraded my gears yet. I was just... I knew Midas was going to disappear sooner or later. So, yeah. Okay, now that I have weapons I actually like, I'm going to put on weapon costumes so I can actually see them. Yeah, I kind of like the glowing book a little bit. But yeah, now that is all for me. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys on the next one. Until then, peace out.